Hey everyone! Today I wanted to talk about an interesting topic, or at least I hope it'll be interesting to you guys. I'm going to be answering a lot of questions about um, me being legally blind. So I talk a little bit about it in some of my videos. A lot of times I mention it because I will like say a color wrong because I'm completely totally colorblind. I see no color at all. And so in a lot of videos I will mix up colors of the baby clothing. Um, if I do tell you guys what color something is and I get it right, it's because I have asked somebody else who can see color to tell me what color something is. And I get a lot of questions about it because a lot of people say, well, how can you film if you're legally blind? And a lot of people don't really know what that means or about my eye condition at all. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be changing Isaac. He's in this adorable puppy overall outfit. I love this on him so much, but it's so big that it's just so big. I mean, it's not too bad, but if he was just a little bit bigger, the outfit was just a little bit smaller, it would be perfect. I'm going to change him into pajamas because I love snuggling with him in pajamas. So these pajamas are by Jimboree in zero to three month, and I think that my husband told me that it's white with yellow stripes and like yellow trim. I think the bird is white too. But I just wanted to describe it for those of you um, who are visually impaired or blind that watch my channel because I do know that I have some completely blind viewers. Um, so I want to talk about how my eye condition affects me as a reborn doll collector or a reborn mommy, whichever you want to call me. I'm kind of a little bit of both. So, um, and by that I mean I don't really treat the dolls like they're real, but, you know, I still love to role play with them and give them personalities and stuff like that. Um, how am I going to do this? Okay, I need to get his hat off, I guess, first. It's just so cute and summery. I want to keep it on him. So, I was not diagnosed with my eye condition until I was six years old. My eye condition is called achromatopsia. It's very rare. Only one in 33,000 people are born with it. And um, some say that it's even more rare than that now. So that's, I think, 10,000 people in the U.S. that have it. Um, this is so hard to take off. <laughs> Overalls. He always slides down on the changing table. So then he puts his feet up on the side of the changing, or not the side, but the end of the changing table. I cannot talk today. The sun is not out either today. I don't know why. It was out earlier. It's not supposed to rain. All right, anyway, <laughs> getting off topic. As always, I'm so good at that. I was diagnosed when I was six years old. When I was born, they knew that something was wrong with my eyes, but they had no idea what. And my vision was bad enough that they thought that my eyes were going to deteriorate and that I was going to go completely blind. So up until the age of six, when they found out I had a chromatopsia, um, teachers at school were preparing me for a life of complete blindness. I was taught braille. Um, I was not allowed to read with my eyes for all of first grade. It really frustrated me because I love reading. So I remember I would sneak to the library and read when I could. And... Then when they found out that it was a chromatopsia, they stopped doing braille with me and all those things because then they felt like it was my choice because a chromatopsia is a very stable eye condition. I will most likely not go completely blind. But I am still considered legally blind and in some 
um, some settings or sometimes I am almost completely blind. And I'll explain that. Because this is a little bit of a weird eye condition and like I said, it's so rare that people don't even know about it really. They've never heard of it before. I've even been to eye doctors that have never heard of a chromatopsia before. So with a chromatopsia, um, you either don't have any cone cells in your retina, um, which I'll explain very quickly. The only reason why I'm explaining so much is because a lot of people don't know any of this. So it's kind of like I have to do a basic um, like overview of everything so you guys understand. <laughs> but in your eye, um, you have your retina. In your retina, you have two different types of cells. You have rods and cones. Rods are the cells that see um, in the dark and in dimmer lighting. They don't see color vision really at all. They don't really see in color. And then your cones, they see during the day in bright lighting um, and they see colors. With a chromatopsia, I do not have any working cone cells or my cone cells just aren't even there at all. Um, it means they're either misshapen to the point where they cannot function or they are non-existent. <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to fit him. If it is, it will fit him perfect. If it won't, it'll be actually pretty surprising because this is zero to three month and he usually fits in zero to three really well. We'll see. So that means for me that during the day, in the sunlight, in direct sunlight and in bright lighting, I am almost completely blind. Um, I guess I would kind of almost compare it kind of to like if you're in a really dark room and you turn on your phone screen or some kind of screen like right in your face when it's pitch dark and you know how it kind of burns your eyes that feeling it really hurts your eyes that's the feeling that I get all the time when I'm out in the sun it gives me terrible migraines sometimes and um everything is just washed out I will try to link some more informative um, videos in the description so that you guys can go learn more about it and maybe get an idea of what I mean. Now, with those videos, I don't even know if they're getting it correct in showing you what they think people with a chromatopsia see because a chromatopsia is not curable. It's not treatable. They haven't found anything that they can do. He looks so cute in this. Aw, I'm gonna have to snuggle him after this video because he just looks so cute. But in dimmer lighting, because I, my rods are fully functioning, I can see almost as normal as everybody else in dim lighting. And actually, it gives me a little bit of an advantage. In the dark, I can see more than most people can see because they're not really sure if like that part of the brain, um, you know, because it only has rods to use, that it tries to use them more does that make sense I don't know what I'm saying I think you guys kind of get my point that like your brain adapts and in a way you have night vision where other people don't so that's actually pretty cool um another thing like I said is that I am completely colorblind most people when they say they're colorblind it means that they just can't see a few different colors or they get a few different colors mixed up I think this is one of the very few eye conditions or maybe the only eye condition where you don't see any colors at all. You just see the whole world in black and white and gray. Now this affects my life in many areas a lot. You know, in picking out my own outfits, in trying to match things and things like that. That affects my reborn hobby so, 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 so much. 
and I'll get into that once I finish explaining everything about like what comes with a chromatopsia. I'm trying to hurry, but I'm trying not to miss anything for you guys. So with a chromatopsia, the best my vision is is 2200. That is when I have my prescription glasses on and they are very strong prescription glasses. <laughs> and I'm in a dimmer light so that my eyes can function almost normally. But in bright light, I am almost completely blind a lot of times. I wear red tinted glasses to help with the light. Um, it filters um, only the lower levels of light through. So it really helps and it actually helps me to have better depth perception because I have very, very little depth perception. I have a hard time telling how far away things are from me or how close they are to me sometimes. But yeah, 2200 is the best it's ever going to get. So I will never drive. Um, that is like one of the worst things I would say about being legally blind is that I can't drive. I can't just go somewhere if I want to go somewhere. I have to rely on somebody else to do it or schedule a ride or something like that. I, I uh, absolutely hate that. I think I forgot to add that in bright light, I do use a cane, um, a red and white cane. A cane really does help a lot. Okay, so this video is turning out to be super long. I'm just going to go ahead and get into how this affects me with the reborn hobby now. And I'm sure there's some things about the eye condition that I missed. Okay, first of all, if I'm looking at a doll to buy, I have to ask somebody how realistic the doll looks in the coloring and the veining and things like that. When I see a doll in person, sometimes I can see the veining, sometimes I can't. It's because of the color blindness. Um, usually I can tell when a doll is too pale to be realistic. Usually I can tell if a doll is too red to be realistic. But other than that, um, I don't really know. A lot of times I have to ask my husband, what color is this baby's hair? Can you describe it to me? Is it red? Is it brown? Um, I'm constantly asking <laughs> my husband to describe colors to me or tell me what colors something is. So when I'm buying a doll, I always show it to him first. So he tells me if this if the doll looks realistic or not. Sometimes I'll send pictures to my close friends in the reborn community and ask them. Sometimes I ask my mother-in-law. So yeah, if I'm unsure, then I usually ask someone. If I have had that artist's work before, then I'm more likely to buy it because I know if I like their painting style in person or not. Um, bonding with dolls. Okay, so this is a big one. So, I like my babies to be floppy, heavy, cuddly. If they are not any of those things, um, then I most likely will not bond with them because like the feeling of holding them, that's a big part of it for me. And I think that a lot of it is because of my eye condition, because that's a big way that I enjoy the hobby is holding them. And I bet that a lot of you visually impaired and um, or completely blind um, reborn collectors can relate to that. Now, some sculpts are beautiful and I see them in pictures I become attached to like that sculpt or I really want the sculpt. And then I'll get it and no matter how many times I take it apart and restuff it and reweight it, just the way I like that sculpt is just not cuddly. Most of the time, those dolls will not stay in my collection because I'm just not enjoying them as much as I could be in enjoying another doll that I would be able to cuddle and hold and enjoy more that way. Um, so a lot of people ask me, oh, like, that was a beautiful doll. Why'd you sell them? Sometimes that's the reason. Not all the time, but sometimes. So dressing the dolls. This has to be... One of the biggest ways that it affects my hobby. Like I said about being completely colorblind, I cannot match anything. I'm sure that you guys have many times seen in my videos where I have dressed a baby and their outfit does not match at all. <laughs> like, 
it's ridiculous. I'm sure that a lot of you noticed in my video dressing all of my dolls in one video that um, I dressed Faith in a romper that had like green trim, green turtles, yellow flowers, um, and it was a white romper and it had, but it was like, had green and yellow on it and those were the main colors on it. I did not know that. I thought that the green was pink. And um, when I was looking through my headband box, I saw a polka dotted pink headband and I knew it was pink because my husband had told me that that headband was pink and I remembered that. So I was like, oh, that one's really cute. It'll match fine. And I put it on her. You guys can go back and see that in the video. And then the next day, my husband saw her dressed like that and he was like, that does not match at all. That looks terrible. And he went and got her a new headband that was yellow out of the box because I couldn't find one that matched. And I was like, what color am I looking for? And I was completely shocked when he told me that that was green on the romper, not pink. Um, and I collect a lot of baby stuff. I've collected a lot of baby stuff over my almost five years or about five years-ish of reborn collecting now. Um, I've collected a lot of clothes and accessories. I love collecting accessories for the babies. I love collecting headbands and, um, and shoes. Not, not so much, so much shoes, but mostly headbands. That's mostly what I collect. Um, blankets. I love collecting blankets because I love doing, like, photo shoots with really pretty backgrounds and wrapping them up and swaddling them in pretty blankets. But the problem with all that collecting is... I don't use hardly any of it because I can't match anything and it frustrates me. It actually really does make me upset that, you know, I think, oh, this goes so good together. It looks so good to me, but to the rest of the world, it looks terrible and it clashes and it just, it doesn't match. But to me, it looks absolutely adorable and I love it. <laughs> just like with, um... <laughs> Faith and her turtle romper and polka dotted pink headband. That's one thing is like I'm trying to collect less accessories but what I'm really actually thinking about doing is asking somebody to go shopping for me that like I really like their taste in whatever they buy for their dolls and to pick out like some accessories that go with outfits and blankets and all that stuff that can all be like switched around that all kind of match if that makes sense or like most of the outfits match or whatever because I would love to have babies that are all dressed up in all the accessories with an outfit but it's really difficult for me to do that being completely colorblind that is probably the most frustrating part about it um another thing is like with my filming and photography so how it affects that I have a really nice camera. I have a Canon G7X. Now the reason, the main reason why I picked this camera when I was searching for a camera that I wanted to use for YouTube and photography is that it auto like corrects the color and the brightness and all of those things by itself, which is amazing for me because a lot of times I can't tell if the camera's focused because the screen's so small for me to be able to see it. I can't see very small things. And with the color, I can't tell, you know, if the color's showing up right on camera. And sometimes I'm sure the camera doesn't do a good job of showing the right color of things. But I can tell you it does better than I would do by myself adjusting a camera. So I love my camera. It it has made my filming and photography with my dolls so much easier and I just love it. It does an amazing job. Even for just a small, simple little camera. Um, but, like, I have a nice phone too. And when I take pictures with my phone of my dolls, I always have to ask my husband, like, is the color showing up right in these pictures? Because the phone does kind of auto correct itself to some extent but not as well as my camera and a few times he said that you know the dolls looked some kind of strange color that they weren't 
um, like one time I took pictures of Aiden and I posted the picture on Instagram and my husband saw it and he was like, this lighting makes this doll look green, like really green. He was like, she's not green or he's not green at all, but why does it make him look green? It's just this lighting. So then I had to take the picture down. Now it's frustrating to me because the picture looked completely normal, but he told me it looked like the doll was green. <laughs> That's really strange to me. Okay, and then the last thing I want to say is, or the last way I would say is that my eye condition affects my hobby, is when I take the dolls out. You guys know I love, love, love taking my dolls on outings. Um, like, to fun places and walking outside. I don't really get to do as many outdoor outing videos with dolls because of my eye condition. It's very difficult for me to be out in the sunlight for a long period of time and it is actually damaging to my eyes and gives me bad migraines. I think I might have already mentioned that. So I don't get to do it as many of those videos as I would love to do and it's harder for me to film those because even with the camera auto adjusting and correcting the colors and everything for me, um, it's really hard for me to tell if the camera is even pointed in the right direction or if it really is focusing or anything like that but yeah so that is how my eye condition being legally blind affects my reborn hobby well my camera is dying so i'm gonna have to end the video here but if you guys have any questions um you can go to my instagram account and ask me there you can also comment about this video in the community section. YouTube has still not given back comments to all the people that have um, videos with children in them. So I have been doing the community posts so you guys can go and chat there about it. It's a little bit different from commenting on videos, but it's still something. You can at least comment. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching everyone.